not Suggs, just in case you're that kind of person. They go, ah, Suggs, no, no, he did a hit. He had a hit with it, but he didn't have the original. That's the original. Uh, right, OK, uh, it is Monday morning, January the 17th, but not an ordinary Monday morning because there are connotations associated with it. And here to tell us more about it is Liam Stowell from the, uh, if I've got this right, the uh, works for the Children and Young People's Crisis Response Team at Mersey Care, the NHS Foundation Trust. So uh, good morning to you. Good, good to see you, Liam. Good morning. Uh, well, first of all, just go through your role, if you would, please, and tell us a little bit about it, what's, uh, what it is you do. Yeah, sure. I have to say I'm impressed that you've actually pronounced my surname correctly, because most people it's say Stowell rather than Stowell. Stowell so oh, much. did I say Stowell? Well, there you, you are. You're right, so yeah, I have to say I'm impressed. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. tell us about your, your role, if you would, please. please. Yeah, sure. So, at the moment, I'm a, a manager of a Children and Young People's Crisis Team, um, which what we call over in Mersey, the Mid-Mersey Division, so that covers... St. Helens, Warrington, uh, yeah. Knowsley and Halton. Um, within that, we cover both of the, what we call acute trust hospitals as well, which is Warrington and Whiston Hospital. Yeah, so yeah. within that, we cover all emergency referrals for, for people up to 18 years old. So that unfortunately tends to be children who have, you know, attempt to take their own lives or they're in a mental health crisis or there's been some form of, of self-harm. So it's a really tough, difficult job, sort of managing such a large uh, area. Let, and, let me and, see if I can try and get an angle on this, because, I mean, you talk about young people who are experiencing mm -hmm. those kind of difficulties. Is, is this something that has increased, if you like, exponentially in the last few years, or has that problem always been there? It's just that now it's perhaps maybe easier to detect that people are more likely to come forth with it, or is it something that the pressures of the modern society we live in has exasperated this problem? I think it's probably a combination of all the above, to be honest. And I think it's especially since the, the pandemic started, there's been sort of a huge magnifying glass on people's mental health. I think because we've been in this sort of constant sort of flux and change in society and there's been this sort of unseen external pressure and fear of, of a virus, which is, I think has exaggerated people's mental health difficulties and, and especially children, really. Because if you think at the, the start of it, mm. interestingly enough, um, referral rates across children's services went down significantly for the first two to three months. And I think that might be a mixture of it, it was a bit of a novelty thing, sort of schools mm. off, then families were home. And it felt like we we're all, all a bit in it together at the start yeah. of it. But I yeah. think as things have, have progressed, I think it's it's got worse. And I think those pressures of on families and on young people have, have, have got a lot worse as well. And if you think of schools, it's been, they've either been in, they've been out, they've, mm. they've been constant changes of teachers, they've been out with sickness, there's been face masks, there's been no, so this constant change is, is really difficult for anyone to contend with, mm. never mind a child which thrive off, you know, routine and, and yeah. it's just not been possible. So mm. inevitably, young people's mental health has got progressively worse and you know, it's not something our service does in particular, but there's um, a local service we have, which is the eating disorder service, and, and their referral rates have gone through the roof. And, really? and that's been something that's been replicated nationally as well. Um, right. And that can be due to almost, you know, the virus is part of it, but that feeling of being out of control and of not knowing where you're going to be from week to week. Hmm. So some people, they, they convey those feelings of being out of control and sometimes very dangerous and unique ways, and that can be restricting food, or it can be harm to mm. self, it can be feeling really anxious, so it mm. can be a combination of all the above. Um, what, what, what is, what's driving this? Is, I know that's probably a very difficult question to answer, but what, you know, what, what seems to be driving this? What, what are the kind of root causes of why people seem to kind of get themselves into it, to a mentally dark place? I, th I think it's a combination of, of a lot of things, you know, with, over recent years, you know, the pandemic's a huge factor in terms of it's something mm. that for generations we've not had to contend with that level of fear and anxiety of something that we have no control mm. of for a long time. I, th I think I would have to say, you know, if it, I mean, and I am the expert on this, but there, there are, you know, m m there's a lot more pressures on younger people these days because, I mean, we, you know, there, w there was a, there certainly was more of an element of, of community that mm. existed perhaps maybe when I was younger um, and that everything now is very competitive as well so you've got that 
you need to look this way. Uh, you need to have this kind of job. Your lifestyle needs to ref reflect this. And of course, you, you see it with social media where people kind of have a tendency to kind of almost create a separate persona to mm -hmm. themselves, perhaps maybe to make themselves feel good. And of course, when they realise that that isn't the reality of it, that must be a very difficult thing to deal with, mustn't it? And I think the social media thing is it's a key element to it. And it has great benefits as, as well as being yeah. also detrimental as well. So if you think of anybody... And I can include myself in this. So a good example would be prior to Christmas, I was doing lots of things on social media to promote mental health nursing. And that was often after work. But then I didn't have that sort of mental downtime because you, you're constantly thinking about work and you're living in, in, in that sort of environment. And it's the same for young people as well. So say, for example, you're being bullied. Yeah. Historically, that might be of being confined to school time which obviously is not good, but now that can continue 24 hours a day on social media. So you almost never get a break from it. Hmm. So, so that's an added pressure. I mean, it can also be the benefit of you can find like-minded people. So if you are someone who is a bit more socially anxious or you have maybe different interests to other people, you can find people yeah. around the world that have, but, but it's finding that balance, which is really difficult because like you say, if you've got your mobile phone, there isn't a break and the built to constantly grab your attention, aren't they? Yeah, Things sure. hanging up. Mm. So it's difficult to have that mental downtime, which mm. we all need. So you think people's sleeping patterns then inevitably change. Yeah. And if you're not sleeping, you, well, that's, you, that impacts on the entire day, doesn't oh, it? Completely, completely. And I think once again, with those routines being thrown out, everyone thrives off routines. And I think that's an added pressure to sort of families that are working because the nine to five world doesn't really exist anymore. Hmm. But that's when schooling still exists as well. Hmm. It's between sort of eight and three or nine and three. Hmm. But if families aren't working those times, like it, it's no one's fault, but if you're not there to look after your child, hmm. then there's going to be consequences of yeah, that. Sure, it, yeah. it, it may be negative, it may not, but we have to accept there's a cause and effect of everything that we do. Hmm. So, no, it's a good example. There was a, a young person that I used to work with um, a, a few years ago and, and, and both of his parents worked in emergency services. So it was rare that they crossed over in terms of parenting together because they'd have to cross over and, and then it was left to other people in, within the family to sort of look after. So that inconsistency in caregivers meant he reacted in, in sometimes these extroverted ways mm. because... He wanted his family, he wanted his parents there, yeah. but because of their jobs, mm. they weren't able to. This and is how he's trying to manifest that desire, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's difficult, isn't it? Because you can't say, well, you need to stop working because that's not realistic either. No, no. That's, so, this is, as I say, when you st it's a perfect storm when you start mixing all those ingredients together because it's one of those things you know what you want to do, but circumstances prevent you from doing it. No, d definitely so, definitely so. And I think with children, and in particular when children go to sort of secondary school, high school, depend on how old you are, depending on yeah. what you, you call that. And then primary school can be a really good nurturing place. It tends to be one teacher, sort of really sort of consistent with boundaries and routines. You go to secondary school, you're suddenly bouncing from classroom to classroom to classroom, teacher wow. to teacher to Never teacher. Thought about it like that. And that is difficult in itself because just the changing of the room and if you say you're more anxious and it's, you've got constant different teachers, it's just naturally inconsistent. So it's really difficult for young people to build up those consistent relationships, yeah. especially if they don't have them at home for whatever reason. Like you say it doesn't always have to be this stereotypical, abusive environment. Mm. It may just be the case that it's a single parent. They have to, you know, divert their attention between two or three children. So mm. inevitably, it's just different. And, mm. and this idea of this sort of, you know, two children, two, two parents probably has never really existed. Yeah, and we sort of yeah. have this, once again, a stereotypical idea of this perfect family, but mm. it, it doesn't really exist and, yeah. and, and hasn't. And I think almost to go back to what you asked before of, of, of what caused it, you know, we've had many, many years now of austerity. So things for children's services, which inevitably impact on families yeah. are no longer there. Things like the Shore Start Centres, even though they're opening 100%. Them back, mm. even though they're opening them up under different guys it, it's, it's still a watered down version isn't it? yeah yeah libraries you know these things within schools where their budgets have been cut so 
sadly some of the first things that will go would be that sort of pastoral support i know you're right listen but we are we, we obviously have been looking at some of the causes there some of the things but we'll, we'll try and look at things in a more positive light in terms of what people can do <clears throat> in a few minutes time and, and you, you are quite right about <clears throat> without overly trying to politicize anything here those things that were as on paper you think yeah we save money by cutting that the long-term costs of those things is incalculable mm -hmm. because if you turn around and you think well you've cut a sure start centre down and stuff like that and as a result of it impacts on somebody's mental health and therefore they have to get professional advice in the long term it becomes more expensive to service the need the, pro the problem doesn't it definitely you know so all right well we'll continue this conversation in a few minutes time Simon is with us more coming up and if there's a question you'd like to put to Simon then you're more than welcome to do so 0151 6400 100 or send us a text start your message with the word scow send it over to double eight double four zero you can email us via the website liverpoolliveradio.com yeah uh, the eye of the tiger from survivor quite a bit of motivational music for us there then liam you know i mean i was thinking you always remember when i watched rocky three and i thought yeah that's it's motivated me i'll get up at five o'clock in the morning crack six eggs six eggs into a thing and neck it in one and then go for a run did it once it didn't happen again after that uh but yeah these are the things that you've got to do because we are on monday the 17th of january known as blue monday uh, and I think the reasoning behind this is that the cost of Christmas is coming home to roost. Give us a couple of the reasons why they call it Blue Monday. Well, I think there's a, few, there's a few reasons. Like you say, there's the cost of Christmas and people tend to have a, an extended period of when they've been paid before Christmas. So there's a financial thing that comes into it. Mm. There's also something as simple as we've had darker nights, longer days, with less yes. sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a factor. Christmas itself, it tends to be a time where people feel happier you come together with friends family and the, sometimes the harsh reality of the workplace hits you mm. whether it's the first second third of january um so th that's a factor in it as well so say there's, there's, a, there's a few things um that, that come into play like i say the just the general stresses mm. of life coming back into it so so yeah i mean it's interesting itself and i, I was talking about this before of Almost naming something Blue Monday it almost becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I always yeah. think... You live up to it. Yeah, just, just rename it of, like, Magnificent Monday. Or something yeah, people yeah, might well. feel a bit happier about it. So what, what would you say people listening to this who may well be feeling a little bit melancholy, for example, you know, if we were to look at it, what, what, are, what are the couple of the simple steps that people can take in order to make themselves feel that little bit better? I think I'll start with almost the the Christ element, but I'll work my work way backwards because I think Mercy Care have got a really good... Um, web page about this so that's um, www.mercycare.nhs.uk forward slash urgent help mm. and on that there's lots of even just general advice and really good information but there's also the numbers of the crisis lines mm. so locally there's two crisis lines which are free phone, free phone numbers and there's one for Liverpool and Sefton well that's mm. for age 16 and over only mm. and then there's one for um, what we call the Mid-Mersey, which once again is the Warrington, Nosley, mm. St. Mm. Helens and Halton. And that's an all-age offer. Mm. So that's, obviously, I can't imagine many six-month-olds are, are ringing up the crisis line. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's there for, a, for everyone's contacts and it's, it's free phone. Yeah. But, I mean, there's lots of basic things that we can all do. And I think it, it depends on, some of it is obviously financial cost. I mean, exercise is a huge thing. Yes, and I'm not 100%. saying getting up and doing a 10k every morning like for me it's simple as walking the dog yeah putting some headphones in listening to some you know music or a podcast or whatever it's almost to take me away from the day because you know mm. my job is stressful as i'm sure lots of people's are so sometimes you just need that downtime mm. and you know there's lots of evidence suggests that something simple as that left to right movement of walking it works of exercise. I, I i i can vouch for it 100 percent because i mean i've been there and you know I, I you know during the lockdown i did a lot of walking i still do a lot of walking now and it's one of those great things especially first thing in the morning you know it might be a little bit bracing out there but you get in you get that nice fresh air into your lungs you're walking up and down you've got your own time you're thinking about things that you can be doing and if you try and start your day positive saying this is what i want to achieve today and the walking because it's while you're doing that you're burning calories mm -hmm. off you know it ain't it's not like going for the marathon but you are burning the calories off as simple as that definitely and it helps to process things mm. that you've done as well because you know if anyone's anything like me i struggle to sleep as well because yeah. i often will ruminate and think about yeah. things the work day. will be up in your mind won't it? yeah yeah and, and little things of replaying conversations so 
like say having some of the exercise can help you feel more relaxed or mm. you know something whether it's simple as ha- having a bath or you know for me it's reading a bedtime story to my mm. to my daughter yeah. yeah you know that just takes me away from mm. you know that you have to do it yeah you have to do it you, you, you do and for me I, I i listen to audiobooks to get me to sleep as well yeah. so i think different people do different things for me music doesn't work because that tends to liven me up yeah even, yeah even, but a banging hardcore just yeah, before you go to bed yeah, not, yeah. not a good call german right techno is just not for me yeah. at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> um, so but it, like, interestingly often it it almost doesn't need to be yeah. a particular story like the voice is, is key for me but let's say mm-hmm. there's lots of simple things that people could do but even sometimes just speaking to a family member or yeah. a friend and yeah. i mean i would advise and once again this is personal preference of doing the actual in-person thing so you, so you hear the voice rather than it being over text because yeah, yeah. you know we have most people tend to have the facility now to be able to even you know call someone and have a, have a video, video chat thing. yeah yeah and, and and i think that was a good thing that probably came out of the pandemic i remember did doing quizzes and i reconnected with mm. some friends i mean i've got a friend now who who lives over in canada with his wife and mm. i've probably never spent as much time with my friends that then probably been at high school yeah 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 so it's yeah. an interesting thing of, of each week to sort of get together and catch up again yeah i mean it's inevitably petered out somewhat yeah but yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah you know just that reconnection with individuals is huge and i think even if you're someone who's not feeling bad if you know someone who's living on their own just contact them yeah, even if they about. do not reply yeah. it doesn't matter send them a message because even if they read it that's still yeah, people think well someone's interested in yeah. It's amazing what that can do, isn't it, it? It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing to yeah. just have someone else connect with you on that basic human level. It it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there is, there's plenty of other things that you can do for people who are struggling a bit more, whether that's with anxiety or, or, or feeling low on mood. And, yeah. you know, I'd encourage people to, once again, to, to contact services, whether that would be... How, you, okay, yeah, tell us about the services people can contact. If you yeah, want. so obviously these GPs is a great place to start. You know, granted at the moment that there's pressures on the system, but mm. you know, I think that's probably slightly exaggerated. I think my GP has, has got back to me every single time. I'm sure there's plenty of people who would say the opposite, yeah. but I yeah. think for most people, I think they, they tend to be quite responsive, and especially when it's mental health, it, it's such mm. a key thing. And yeah, yeah. you know, most areas, and I know locally the the IAP service, which is um, you know improving access to psychological therapies, that's mm. a self refer service. Mm. So you know, so if you just type that into search engine, you, you'll find ways of doing that. So you don't necessarily have to go via your GP. And there's plenty of apps and things like Headspace is, is really mm. good in terms of whether you're into meditation or not. Mm. You know. I tried that. I struggle with it. In yeah, my yeah. mind just isn't able I, to I, I would love. I, I, I was going to even go to like some kind of it was like a Buddhist workshop or something because I didn't want to understand um, meditation because, you know, some of the most successful minds in the world have a degree of meditation within their routine. You just mentioned the routine earlier as well, so there's got to be something to be had for it. Uh, unfortunately, mate, we're out of time on this, but we, it'd be great to get you back in again so we can talk further on it because it is one of those subjects that really, really does need to be exposed as much so people can understand it a whole lot more. And if there's you know, many of the things that I can pick up on that we've spoken about today, audio books is definitely in there. But I would advise, I got Dante's Inferno and I, I listened to that before I went to bed, which was a real bad move because it's horrific. Uh, so maybe that's- not so much say that. that's an interesting choice. <laughs> no, yeah. So, I thought, the only really reason I got it, because it was one of the things, questions that was always coming up on the chase. Don't say he's in fan of that. I want to know what it is. Blimey. But yeah, no, the uh, audio books are great. Uh, just one more time, if you would, if people want to find out more about you and what you do and your fir- your organisation or your firm, your, your, your guys do uh, contact, how they do it again, please, if you would. Yeah, so that's uh, merseycare.nhs.uk and it's forward slash urgent help. But even if you just go on the Merseycare website, there's plenty of links to the, the numbers and the different services. Brilliant. Thanks very much indeed. That's Liam St- Stowell. Stowell, got it right. I'm doing really well, aren't I? Uh, Right, and we'll catch up with Liam again in the not-too-distant. Thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you. All right, then, it's uh, 25 to midday, slightly later than normal. We're going to be catching up with Chris Cannon after this one from Michael Bolton.